A very good morning, good evening and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you so very much for tuning in to the Life Signatures Radio. It is a daily show which is an inspirational, motivational, educational show on the subjects, three main subjects on purpose, productivity and resilience and anything and everything in between those lines. In this show, which is daily, we normally talk about those stuff and uh, it's a 15 minute or a 10 minute between 10 to 15 minutes episode every single working day you can't miss it we are in the middle of a series it's a long series i know it's gonna be a long series it's been long so far in this series we're talking about raising spirit led children it's a subject that is so close to everyone's heart and i know and uh, you can find that very many people are talking about education academics parenting and all that stuff family and all that stuff but raising spirit led children is not a religious episode it's not a religious topic it's a human topic and we're gonna go deeper into this so stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. covered quite a bit of things as far as this topic is concerned and there's quite a bit that uh, still need to go ahead and uh, over over uh, several episodes we've been discussing raising spirit-led children and uh, I, I got someone to talk about two interesting terms in the sentence culture and tradition at some point in time and he said that whereas tradition is fixed and at times people kill and protect it Culture, on the other hand, is dynamic and it changes with time. Very wise. I think very spot on. So come to think about this. In raising spirit-led children, are we steeped into the traditions of the past? Or are we being dynamic and present, shifting with the cultures of the day? Now, when I talk about shifting of the cultures of the day, some people who are conservative, it's good to be conservative. Today, I had a pastor saying, we are conservative, but we are not dead. It's possible for us to be conservative and stay true to the things that are of the past, but they're no longer serving. For example, I saw Gary Vaynerchuk telling kids who are asking him questions about careers and so on, that... A university degree used to be a guarantee for success for your parents and their parents, but not anymore. See, the dynamics have changed. Whereas it used to be true, a dynamic back then, 50 years back, it's not true today. And the same thing, I can tell you this, the same thing applies to raising spirit-led children. Carl Jung he said something absolutely profound. He said that he who looks outside dreams, but he who looks within or he who looks inside awakens. So we've seen several, in the previous episodes, we've seen several things on how important the spirit is. I've, I've said over and over again, this is not a religious um, episode or a religious series we're doing. This is is a human series you are a spirit 
even if you do not believe in the divine, even if you do not believe in God, you are a spirit. It doesn't negate the fact that you are a spirit. Your thoughts are spiritual. Your vision, your dreams, they are spiritual. Your ultimate work is actually spiritual. And you know it. You have a sixth sense and you know it. These are borders of the spirit. And I'm just scratching the surface. So we've seen that the spirit is the basic makeup of every human being. And there is no human being who is not a spirit. None. None exists just, you know, flesh, blood, and, and that's all. No, we are spirit. And I know the people who, who do not believe in God will want to reason against that and they want to say, I'm just matter. When I die, that's the end of it. See, you normally reason by evidence. You normally say, where is the evidence? And I'm going to ask you the same thing. Where is the evidence that you have that after you are dead, it's just that. There is no spirit. But we will be digressing. We are not merely flesh and blood and bone. In pursuing life and especially in our attempts to raise spirit-led children, we must of necessity come to the understanding that we need to pay attention to matters related to the spirit. I have explained this over the previous episodes over and over again. And every time I go there, I really want to go back and start explaining again. If, you, if you're joining for the very first time, you do yourself a great service if you go back 10 episodes, 15 episodes and just dig them up. And follow through the series. All instruction, all teaching, everything that we do to raise our children, correlating to disciplining them, discipling them, that does not cherish that a child is a treasure at the core of it all, is steeped to fail. If we do not have the mentality that this is a spiritual being and this is a treasure, in discipling them, in raising them up, if we steep ourselves to the traditions that we've always known, we have failed. You are not raising a spirit-led child if you are not doing several things. And we're going to look at some of them even as we continue. We've already looked at some of them in, in, the, in the previous uh, episodes, but we're going to continue doing the same in the episode today. Because there are several things that you should stand to be warned about that will show you that you're not raising a spirit-led child. And we will tackle these points one by one. I think the first thing that I'm going to talk about today, I've already mentioned it by quoting Carl Jung. Carl Jung said, He who looks outside dreams. When we look outside, we are only true to what we already know exists. We are true to our traditions. We are true to what has been proven and trusted and uh, checked and tested but when a child comes into your life that child is a spirit the bible says a spiritual person is like the wind you don't know where they're coming from you don't know where they're going those are people who are born of the spirit in other words they there is no framework so to speak where you can be able to put there is no template you don't put spiritual people who are human beings in templates and expect them to be unique the way they were meant to be unique in the first place. So the first thing, I'm going to tell you this. You are not raising a spirit-led child if you are not teaching them to cherish their inner compass. Their inner compass. There is something like an inner compass. There is such a thing as an inner compass in each and every human being. You know why? That's why you see very many people who are passionate about some things and they are not passionate about others. I'm passionate about people. I'm not passionate about animals. I'm reading a book by Gary Skinner called Where Faith Lit the Way. This is a man who raised up a church in Uganda and it has 17 branches with one in South Sudan. And I heard him talk about when he was raising up, when he was being raised up as a child, how he was inclined to want to be a game warden at the Kruger National Park in South Africa. That's where he grew up. He grew up in Nelspruit, South Africa. And at the end of the day, following matters related to the spirit, he ended up raising people. 
because he says he heard the voice of God saying, I don't want I want you to live taking care of animals and I want you to take care of people. That's matters related to the spirit. Today we don't know him because of animals. This is just a, a, a footnote. Animals are just footnote of what he has done. But his main appearance in this life is people. Raising people. Vulnerable mothers. Vulnerable children. Raising leaders. Equipping leaders in communities. We know him as stars. But you see, where did that come from? Where did that greatness come from? It came from within. It came from deep within. We do not come on the face of the earth flat, blank. In the mind, yes, probably. There is no data in the mind. But in the heart and in the spirit, I tell you, it is full already. So full, you will be shocked. I extensively shared some of these things in the previous episodes, but a small recap will help. Life is lived inside out not outside in and of course i should just refresh that life should be lived inside out and not outside in because outside out outside in is also something that people many people do and at the end, at the end of the day we get frustrated and we miss our destinies the child that you have did not come to you necessarily with a blank slate they came already equipped inside of them with spirit that is like an inner compass this spirit speaks of things that matter to them it speaks of things that they are passionate about it speaks of things that they dream to do it speaks of things that touch transformation they touch change they 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 touch matters related to creating an impact in society these are matters emanating from the spirit because i can tell you the opposite the opposite if things are not coming out of the spirit you know what they are they are self-centered selfish what can i gather right they are backbiting it's like fighting elbowing your yourself to get on the top for the sake of yourself it is not spirit but spirit matters related to the spirit they differ from one person to another but they are mostly about betterment of society betterment of this world if that child is raised not to cherish the leading of the inner compass listening to the inner compass their success in the end will still be empty we know that how many of us are in our 40s 30s 50s 60s 70s 80s we've lived all these years and we are sensing the emptiness in our spirits we are sensing the emptiness in our hearts we are like the guy who wrote ecclesiastes chapter 1 he said meaningless meaningless utterly meaningless everything is meaningless why because life was not lived from the inside out life was lived from the outside in the same guy who wrote that book of ecclesiastes he said he tried everything i mean he said he slept with all the people he wanted to sleep with he, he created harems he, he decided to indulge any kind of pleasure that his body dreamed of he availed it to himself and in the end he said it's meaningless you know why because it comes from the outside the inner compass speaks of the things we were created to do it speaks of our purpose it speaks of the direction that we were supposed to take the inner compass speaks of things that matter to us it speaks of the passion that has been put inside of us the inner compass speaks of our core work that we were called to do equipped to do and that's how we're supposed to be raising people by excavating what is within them and i'm going to talk about that tomorrow when we're talking about uh, talking about extraction if we fail to recognize that we are not raising spirit led children if we ignore this and the problem is that it is ignored in all the templates of society of discipling and raising up children matters of the inner compass are totally forgotten there is no syllabus there is no focus there is no place they have not been accorded a place but we need to go back there because that's what matters Tomorrow we go deeper. Stay tuned.
Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.